Hi, Shannon Lewis here, Panoptic Development. Welcome to part one of our two-part series called Clear as Mud. These two videos, we hope to clear up some confusing terms, such as a web app versus mobile app, adaptive design versus responsive design. There's a lot of confusion out there, and we hope these two videos will help. Today's webinar, we're going to discuss the different types of websites, such as a traditional website, a responsive website, an adaptive website, and a mobile website. I like to put different types of websites into two different buckets. One bucket being websites that that really don't care what type of device you're accessing it from. It will be the same user experience whether you access it, the site from a mobile phone, a desktop, or a tablet. Two examples of these are your traditional website, the websites that we all kind of think of when we think of websites, and then a mobile website. I have an asterisk on the mobile website, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. And then the other type of websites are ones that actually determine the type of device that you're accessing it from, and optimizes the user experience for that particular device. Two examples of this are responsive websites and adaptive websites. Traditional website has a, is a single website that you build and maintain and has a single URL. As I said earlier, it does not adjust for the type of device that's accessing it and is the least expensive to build and maintain. An example of this is the ASPCA. As you can see here, I have screenshots from accessing that site from either a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile phone. And you can see that the layout's identical regardless. There's no adjustments made for the type of device. Then you have a mobile site. A mobile site really is a traditional website that is optimized for a mobile user. Traditional websites typically are optimized for the desktop. It actually has a separate URL. When you go to the site, it detects that you're on a mobile device, and it actually redirects you to a second website, a traditional website that is optimized for mobile. That website typically has its own, it has its own URL, and it's typically like m.website.com or mobilewebsite.com. Now, from a development standpoint, you must maintain two separate code bases, two separate servers, so it is more expensive to, to have. E-commerce sites cons commonly use mobile sites. When I was out looking for some examples of a traditional website, I noticed that almost every e-commerce site I went to has a mobile site. Mobile sites do offer you the ability to go to the full version, the full site. So if you're used to shopping at lobean.com on your desktop, and you just don't like the mobile version, you can go to the desktop version on your mobile phone. So a fun little hack, you might not even know you've been redirected to a mobile site. So if you actually touch the address bar, you'll see m.lobean.com, and that's how you know that you've been redirected. So here are some examples of what uh, the L.O. Bean site looks like, depending on whether you come in from a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile phone. Now in the lower right, I wanted to show you what a mobile site looks like if you come in from a desktop. And as you can see, it looks the same as whether you, as if you come in from a mobile phone. I showed that because this really is why I put this in with the first bucket, because once you're on a mobile site, it's not detecting that you're on a desktop and sends you back to the desktop version. It just assumes that everyone on a mobile site is a mobile user. Um, matter of fact, I probably messed up their Google Analytics here. They're probably someone's probably like, "Whoa, someone came in on a desktop. That's crazy." And then the second bucket are responsive and adaptive sites. In these sites, they, as I said earlier, they detect the screen size, the screen resolution, and provides an optimal experience for that device. It's a single code base and a single site, so it's different than a, having a mobile site where you have to have the traditional and the mobile as two, two different sites. The main difference between responsive and adaptive is kind of how they do the adjustment. An adaptive site, the developer builds multiple, multiple static layouts for each of the screen resolutions. So you'll have a home page for a mobile phone, you'll have another home page for a desktop, and possibly another home page for a tablet. And when you access that site, on the server side, it determines what type of device you're accessing it, 
and it provides the correct web page for that particular device. On a responsive design, it actually dynamically adjusts the screen, adjusts to the screen resolution. So this does this on the client side, so it's actually slower. But a fun little hack, if you actually change your browser window size, you'll actually see the, um, the website change dynamically in front of your eyes. So an example of a responsive site is uh, Boston Globe. And as you can see here, that the desktop and the tablet are very similar. But when you go over the mobile, the layout is much different. So I'm going to show you um, the fun little hack here for, in a minute. As you can see here, um, we are on the ASPCA site. And this is an example of a traditional website. So when I go and adjust my browser size, you can tell that nothing changes other than the content is just truncated. But now when we go to a responsive site, which is Fox Creek Leather, which is one of our clients that we actually built this responsive design for them, you'll notice that as I change the, the screen size, that the page dynamically changes. Notice here that the, the text gets smaller, and then it changed again. So you can see that you, that's how you know that you're on a responsive site, that the, the page actually dynamically changes in front of your eyes. So we've already talked a little bit about the number of websites you need to maintain for each of the different types of websites, what, what, what it's optimized for. But one of the areas that we haven't talked about yet is analytics and keywords. Google actually states that they prefer a responsive design for, for analytics. The reason being it's a single URL and it's mobile friendly. You might say, well, what about adaptive? Adaptive is a single URL and mobile friendly. True, but the difference here is adaptive could, doesn't necessarily have to, but could have different content for the same URL. Because if you remember, I talked about it having static web pages or, you know, or pre-built web pages for the different type of device. If the developer wanted, she could change the content for a mobile phone, for like, so they say the home page, than a desktop. And from a crawl standpoint, um, that's difficult. They don't like that when you have different content for the same URL. Mobile site, obviously, is not optimal because it has two URLs. But on the flip side, from a keyword standpoint, on a mobile site, you can use keywords specific to mobile users because you know the people on that site are mobile are on mobile phones. So that has an advantage from a keyword standpoint. With regards to which costs more, I think we can all say hands down that a traditional website is going to cost the least amount to build and maintain. Now with the other three, it's kind of a toss-up. It's, it's kind of like when you buy a car. You can buy a car that is the least expensive car to buy, but then it may have very high maintenance costs. So the overall cost of ownership for that particular car could be more expensive than if you bought a more expensive car to start, which has less maintenance. So when you think about the cost of building a website, you not only need to look at the initial cost to build it, you also need to think about the cost to maintain it. And it's hard to say which one is more, more expensive or least expensive. Probably a mobile site's going to be most expensive because you're maintaining two different sites. But really, it depends on, you know, how many changes you make, what's your maintenance cost, that sort of thing. So it's, it's really hard to say definitively which one's more expensive. So you're probably asking me, when, when, should I use, you know, when should I decide to use a responsive design or adaptive design? Well, as I said, Google does recommend responsive. Then they will penalize non-mobile friendly sites from a search standpoint. But you really need to know your audience. You know, if you have very few mobile users who come in, and it's mostly desktops and tablets, you're probably fine with a traditional site, at least in the short term, until that audience base changes. Also, what's your budget? Can you afford to build two different sites? Can you afford the extra expense of building responsive or adaptive design up front? You also find that responsive sites have longer load times. So if your site is image heavy, you may not want to build a responsive design 
That's why a lot of e-commerce sites actually go to a, using a mobile site in, instead of a responsive design because responsive designs are do take a lot longer to load. I hope that this first part of our two-part series helped to explain the differences between the different websites and now when you hear responsive design or adaptive design or mobile website you'll understand what people are talking about. Thank you and I hope to see you for series or part two of the series.